Good evening. How is everyone doing? Well, I pray that you've had an amazing day. I know that um, it was a very busy weekend, but it's been amazing today. And I'm sitting here in my office and took a couple of pictures and put them on Facebook and have been, oh, like the sky is amazing. And the colors are changing. It is so awesome to watch how God just keeps us, just keeps us always amazed at what he's doing and what he's um, giving us. The color palette, the conversations, the changing uh, seasons. I know one thing. We have an amazing God who wants to hold us and he wants us to be taught. He wants us to listen and then to go, to go and do, to be his hands and feet in this place and in this space and time, to be the little Christ in each of our communities. Well, we're going to go ahead and begin, and I know people will be joining us. I, I, lately, I haven't been able to see many of the comments coming through, so if, if you send me a comment, I may not see it until after, and that's okay, too, because maybe that's God's way of keep, keeping me focused on teaching, but let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this night, for this time together. Uh, it's always so short. But God, we know that you have so much to teach us. And so be with us. We ask this in your name. Amen. All right. You obviously know we are in Genesis chapter four, uh, 45. 46, all of a sudden I had a memory lapse, and we're going to get, you know, we kind of have had a couple of sections as we have been going through this of genealogy. Well, we're getting it again. Um, there's a reminder, I think, for us, and really this is the first time Moses is going to refer to the whole family as Israel. I think it's interesting. And remember, because Moses is the author of Genesis. So I find it interesting that this is the first time, uh, or it, it is uh, the first time he is refer referring to the whole family um, as Israel. This is the beginning. You know, it's the next beginning that happens. So I find it interesting. So it's the genealogy of those who went to Egypt, essentially. And we're going to go back and forth a little bit. So you may just have to write down some uh, verses to go flip back and forth, because we're going to look at Genesis and earlier in Genesis, and then Numbers, and then First Chronicles. So we're going to be doing a little bit of that back and forth. And uh, I probably am not going to read them all uh, to you as well. I mean, otherwise, we're, all we'll do is flip back and forth in the Bible. And I think maybe there's a little more to do than, I hate it when my tripod gets moved and I bump it and move it. But anyway, so let's begin in verse 8. Now these are the names of the sons of Israel. Isn't that interesting? Who came to Egypt. So this is the body. This is the body of Israel who went from Canaan now to Egypt. They're making another movement of the whole clan of all of them. And we'll, we'll add here at the end, and it'll tell us how many um, are traveling in this um, group. And it's, it is amazing when you think about that this only names the descendants. This does not necessarily name 
the children and all of the peop others, the servants or the wives or, and, and so we have, we are not, the numbers are probably much greater, but they're moving a whole clan from one place to another with all the animals. So just imagine that. Okay. So verse eight, we'll come back up here. And, um, Yaakov and his sons, because he's the head, and he's the principal of them. So he is now the one who's going to be in charge, kind of. Yaakov's firstborn was Reuben, and we know that from Genesis 29, 32, that that would have been the firstborn for um, Yaakov. Verse 9, Reuben's son, sons, Hanuk, Palu, Hetzron, and Carmi. Um, they were the heads of those families. Okay, so what we're getting is the naming of a lot of the names. Like with, um, let's see, for the firstborn of Reuben in uh, Genesis 29, verse 32, we hear that. And we can remember back, Leah became pregnant and gave birth to a son, and she named him Reuben. For he, uh, for it is because the Lord has seen my misery, surely my husband will love me. Now remember, Leah uh, was kind of forced on into the marriage, and Rahel was the love. And so we're getting a little bit of that story replayed for us to remind us about them. Okay, so then in verse 10, Shimon's, or Simon's sons, Yamul, Yaman, Ohad, and Yakin, and Zar, and Shalul, the son of the Canaanite woman. She was probably, the Canaanite woman here is probably a concubine may have been a second wife, but there's bigger speculation that that would have been a concubine for Shalul. Now, um, if we if we want to look up some of those names, Yamul, which is also Namul, is found in Numbers 26. I didn't. I did not look them all up, and I will. Um, I don't think I want to take a lot of time to fumble through finding them all for us. But this one is in Numbers 26, verse 12. The descendants of Simeon by their clans were through Nemal, the Nemalite clan. And so we get these clan names, which is the same as, see, we get a difference in how we translate. If we're going strictly by the Hebrew, what I'm reading is the act is what's Hebrew. And then we've made them, we've changed that over a little bit. So don't get too, con don't get too confused about this. Um, okay. So then in verse 11, Levi's sons are Gershon, Kehot, and Merari. They became priests and they were Levites in Numbers 3.1. We discover that part of that story. Yuna's sons, Ur, Onan, Sheila, Peretz, and Zerah. But Ur and Onan had died in the land of Canaan. Now, it's interesting. They did not go to Egypt. But to historically put all the descendants in, even though they did die in Canaan, they are mentioned in the genealogy. So there's some addition and subtraction of names as we go through this, this section. Um, I kind of got, and, and it is confusing. And I, I think it's hard maybe for us because these are not names that are easy for us to read. Okay. So, and Peretz's son were Hetron and Hamel. These two possibly were born in Egypt. They were probably not born in Canaan. At least we don't think so. Again, there's speculation. We're not real sure because it's not like there's a birth certificate out there that we can go back and really trace. But we're going by the documents that we can find and by the writings to see where some of these people died and 
when they were even born. So we think that they were born in, in Egypt. Now, Yisachar's sons, Tola, um, Puva, Yov, and Shimron, these were the, uh, the Puva, Yov, and Shimron were heads of their families. We find their families listed in 1 Chronicles 7, 1. Now, the name of Tola, he is listed and said that he is the father of a numerous race, of a very numerous race in the days of David and number 22,600. And we find that mentioned in 1 Chronicles 7, 2. So we have some descendants and some some historical information about some of these characters anyway. Because if I go to First Chronicles um, 7, 2, I was going to, I had looked it up earlier and then I didn't mark it. How silly of me. Because I'm looking between, obviously, two Bibles here. Okay, so the sons of Tola, Uzi, Ephra, Jeriel, Jemai, Ibsan, and Samuel, heads of their families during the reign of David, the descendants of Tola listed as fighting men in their genealogy number 22,600. So we find some of these references back and forth, and it's kind of interesting to find how these all um, start to fall together. In verse um, 14, Zebulon's sons, Sarah, Elon, and Alel. Uh, theirs are mentioned in Numbers 26, verse 26, to reference back to find more about theirs. Now, verse 15. Now, these are the sons of Leah, whom she bore to Yaakov in the country of Aram, and also Dinah, his daughter. What we know is there were only six sons that were born in Aram. Now, the sons' sons were born in Canaan. What's interesting here is look at the rest of this verse. All the persons among his sons and daughters were 33. So only Dinah is mentioned, but with daughters being plural, we have to make a reading that there were more daughters. But again, the girls are not mentioned uh, for the most part. I mean, we get a few female names in and out, but not mostly. And so it's interesting that out of Leah, there would have been 33 that would have come as they're moving to Egypt. Okay? Now, verse 16. This is... Gad is one of the sons of Zilpah, one of Leah's maids. So Gad's sons, Tis, I, I can't say some of these, Tisvan, Tisvan and Haggai, Shuni and Etzbon, Eri, Arodi, and Arali. You find their history and their story in Numbers 26, 15. Asher's sons, Yemena, Yishva, Yishvi, Berea, and Sarah, their sister. We get another sister, another daughter mentioned here. Um, it was important, apparently, to mention her name. Now, the rest of this lineage you can find in Numbers 26, verse 46. Now, this is the youngest son of Asher. So Berea's son, so we just said Berea, Hever, and Malkiel. Malkiel is in Genesis 46, verse 12. Um, we find, well, I guess, I don't know why that said that, because I don't think that's right. Um, uh, I don't know. That may I don't think that's right. Um, okay, so that's the youngest son of Asher. I think I made a mistake there. These are the sons of Zilpah. Okay, remember, 
whom Laban had given to Leah and his daughter. To Leah, his daughter, she bore these to Yaakov, and there were 16 persons, children and grandchildren. Now remember, Leah was in a forced, uh, was forced upon Yaakov, Zilpah, Bilhar, the concubines, and Rahel was the legitimate wife or the legal wife. And so now we're going to start to hear about the, the sons of Rahel, Yaakov's wife. This is the favor one, remember, the only lawful wife that there was. And so we're going to begin in verse 19. The sons of Rahel, Yaakov's wife, Yosef and Benjamin. Doesn't seem like we were too long ago. We were talking about them and we've got them listed again. To Yosef, there were born and there there were born in the land of Egypt, whom Asenath, daughter of Potpharah, priest of On, bore to him, Menasah and Ephraim. Okay, so this is the daughter of Dinah. Asenath is the daughter of Dinah. They were educated in the house of Potiphar, the prince of Tanis. Okay? I know. It's like a lot of names and a lot of woo. And, and a lot of these, they do become the kings of the heirs of the land. And so the names are somewhat like Manasseh and Ephraim become familiar names because of what they end up doing. And they do become the, the heads of the tribes that go to those places. So Benjamin's sons, in verse 21, Bella, Becher, and Ashbel, Gera, and Naaman, Ai, and Rosh, Mupim, Hupin, and Ard. He had ten sons. Now, I, I found it interesting, and, and think about this, all the way through, while he's being um, talked about by Yosef, it's about he's a young lad, and yet now there's 10 sons. It's amazing how quickly he, he, he propagated very early, I have a feeling, but, and that would not have been uncommon. There also may have been multiple, um, concubines, as well as a wife. There may have been some concubines that were helping to procreate. The fact there's 10 sons here. Verse 22, these are the sons of Rahel who were born to Yaakov. All the persons were 14. Now that's sons and grandsons. This would have been multiple generations in adding this in. Now we have the sons of Bilhah. Remember, it's another concubine. So Dan's sons, now it says sons, with an S on it, plural. We only have one name, Husham. We think there may have been another who died, although we are not sure. This is one of those, not sure what may have happened. Or is it was it just an error in writing that we were listing sons? Uh, the, the, what, I, what I read... They are pretty sure this was, there would have been another, but would have maybe died as an infant. So Naphtali's sons, Yatzel, Guni, Yetzer, and Shelem, are mentioned again in 1 Chronicles 7.13. These are the sons of Bilhah, whom Laban had given to Rahul, his daughter, another one of the handmaids, that had been given. She bore these to Yaakov. All the persons were seven. Verse 26. All the persons who came with Yaakov to Egypt, those going out from his loins, aside from the wives of Yaakov's sons, all the persons were 66. Okay, let's back up. So we're talking about the total of everyone who would have been. 
the and going out from the loins is really about the seed and the offspring that were coming or were part of not just those that were born in Canaan, but also those that would have been born in this journey. But this didn't happen, not like us. I mean, it's not uncommon, quite honestly, for us um, to maybe travel 700 miles in a day. I don't know. I it, It's possible to do for us. At driving at the speeds we do and the vehicles we do, we can drive 700 miles in, in a day. That would not have been possible. So there could have been, and that's why there's we're not sure of the count. And, um, okay, now, verse 27. Now, Yosef's sons who had been born to him in Egypt, the persons were two. Thus, all the persons of Yaakov's household who came to Egypt were 70. Seven. Now, there's a discrepancy. You may find in reading um, that the, uh, some sources say there were 75 in total. It depends on how we count a few things. Um, I don't know that it's worth arguing over. It's one of those, I accept the fact that the scripture and the word says 70. Um, what I know is that out of that grew to a, to that number of 70, grew to 3 million. Get this, before the Exodus. And it fulfilled God's promise of a multitude. Three million grew from this number, from this 70 or 75. Three million before the Exodus. Imagine. The promise had been fulfilled. The covenant had been, had been answered. There was no question. Verse 28, which, see, to me, that's the, the bigger part about the story. It's not the number. It's about the fact that that covenant, that promise of a multitude, was now fulfilled. Verse 28. Now, Judah, he had, he had sent on ahead of him to Yosef. See, Judah was a better representative than any of the other brothers. The other others had kind of uh, ruined the reputation a little bit. They had done some damage to themselves. They had not done things the way they should have. And so Judah is now being sent ahead to go meet with Yosef. Um, and so continue on to give directions ahead of him to Goshen. To prepare a space, to arrange things, maybe to get directions where to go once we get there. How do we find Goshen? And where in Goshen do we go? So let's continue on. When they came to the region of Goshen, it was the land nearest Canaan. But where? I mean, Goshen is not just like a one-mile place. It's not like a little Marysville or a little Mesa or a little um, uh, Lincoln or even a little Fremont. Oh my gosh, Goshen was a very large land. And so where do they want to go? Where do they need to go? So verse 29, Yosef had his chariot harnessed and went up to meet Israel, his father. So those servants were getting things ready. Now imagine, imagine Yosef is going to meet Israel for the first time in 20 years. Imagine what this is. So he went up. Um, you know, the geography, is it up or is it down? You know, I think sometimes when we're talking, you know, we go, we go up to, um, I go from here, from home, I go up to Fremont. Uh, land elevation, I don't think, is anything. And I go down to Kansas City. It's almost the north-south. And if I'm going to go out to Phoenix, I go out to. So I, it's interesting when we get some of these went up to meet, you know. 
So when he caught sight of him, he leapt out of his... Okay, that's not there. But he leaps out of his chariot and he runs up to his father and presents himself. Can you imagine what this reunion was? And he, come back to the scripture, he flung himself upon his neck and he wept upon his neck continually. This is a father and son being reunited. Is this a foretaste of maybe what the prodigal son in the New Testament story is? Is this the story of reunion and reconciliation, of meeting and joy? Is this the joy when we come home and embrace the other? Whether it be friend or family, is this the hug that is amazing? That we comment maybe to each other that you hug really well. That's good. Is that what this hug is? The weeping and the crying or joy? But for me, this image, when I read it, it's the prodigal son, the prodigal father, the reunion of father and a son who haven't seen each other for so long. Oh, my. Oh, my the foreshadowing of a story in the New Testament for you and me, the foreshadowing and reminder that that's what it is for each of us each day as we come to the Father and say, here I am, God. Send me to do. Verse 30, Israel said to Yosef, after the silence had been broken. Can you imagine? Now I can die. Since I have seen your face, that you are still alive. Oh, it's not that he wants to die immediately. Actually, um, Israel will live another 17 years. But it is that peace. It is their calmness in his heart. There is satisfaction and wholeness. There is contentment. It is that joy of the prodigal son feeding and having a feast for all who gathered. Verse 31, Yosef said to his brothers and to his father's household, they, after all the honor and the uh, and affection was shown, there had to be some business to take care of, because this is now a, really about instructions about the interview with Pharaoh, verses thirty one to thirty four. Well, basically to the end of this chapter are about the interview that's going to happen with Pharaoh. Um, there needs what. Yosef knows is there has to be a secure place for his family and his relatives away from the Egyptian society, away from the Egyptians. They need to, he needs to protect the Hebrews and the shepherds from intermingling and losing their identity. There had to be boundaries set. I want you to think about that. There's a couple of images that I want you to think about, especially to come to Wednesday to Revelation, because there's a little there, there's some more carryover we're going to find. So coming back up to 31, I will go up so that I may tell Pharaoh and say to him, my brothers and my father's household who were in the land of Canaan have come to me, not just for a visit, but they are staying here. So Yosef is going to go first to Pharaoh. Now, Pharaoh already knew they were coming, but he's going to go and have this pre-talk with Pharaoh. Verse 32, the men are shepherds of flocks. Indeed, they have always been livestock men, 
and their sheep and their oxen, all that is theirs, they have brought along. So he's again telling Pharaoh, they've brought everything with them. They're shepherds. Um, this is their occupation. This is their vocation. This is what they've been called. Just like Yosef was called to be a dream, um, a listener to dreams. And now in Pharaoh's court, verse 33, that will be when Pharaoh has you called and says, what is it that you do? Because <laughs> he, Pharaoh will order him to come, them to come. And he's going to ask, what is your job? What do you do? Are you a tradesman? Do you, are you a marketeer? Um, what do you sell? Verse 34, then say, your servants have always been livestock men. From our youth until now, so we, so our fathers, in order that you may settle in the region of Goshen. For every shepherd of flocks is an abomination to the Egyptians. Okay. Shepherds were not, were not high on the totem pole. In fact, they were kind of at the bottom. What Yosef wants them to do is to make sure that Pharaoh hears that they breed and feed and sell their animals, that they are merchants. And yet the shepherds were being, shepherds of flocks were looked down on. Egyptians did not eat the flesh of slain beasts. But they are asking to be safely housed and to go to Goshen, into that region, to be isolated from. Think about this. The shepherds are looked down upon by the Egyptians. scum, low cast outs, not worth anything. And yet, when we move into the New Testament, the shepherds are the first to see Jesus. The cast outs, the has-beens, the lowly of lowlies, are given privilege over the kings of the countries. The irony, we have a prodigal son story. We have a Jesus story coming out of all that we do. My friends, can you believe it? It is 7.30. It is hard to believe it goes so fast. I never can get, I, I, I'm always just shocked that we don't get any farther. My friends, this night, I lift up my prayers to each of you. Know this week that you are in my heart and you are on my mind. I carry you with me. Wherever I go, just as God carries each of us and walks before us and behind us, next to us and under us and above us. My friends, join me Wednesday, 7 o'clock, Revelation. And of course, church on Sunday. But let's get to Wednesday and let's have another time of studying his word. Pure and clean. And now, my friends, Go in peace, knowing that God is holding you this night and in the days ahead. Amen. See you later.